All right, my friends, you asked for a scarf and who am I to say no? So today we're gonna go find us a pattern, learn how to read it and make that sucker. Stay tuned. So if we've not met, my name is Jamie and I'm with Therapy and Knots and welcome to the crochet area. So our group over on Facebook, and first off, if you're not there, go join it. I'll put it down in the description, or you can just search for Therapy and Knots on Facebook. It is a free community kind of group for us to be able to put patterns and talk, and if you get stuck, and if you need some tips and tricks, it's just, it's everything you can think of that is beginner crochet is all in that one page. So come join us. But in that group, I put out a survey and I said, what, what do you want to do next? And then like the number one answer was, can we do a scarf? So I thought we're going to do a, a couple of things in this video. Number one, how can you find a free pattern? So we're going to go find a free pattern for a scarf. How can we read said pattern? How much material do we know to get? And then how can we make it? So that is what we're going to do here. All right. So how to find a pattern. I just put a post up on the blog for therapyandknots.com that walks through exactly how to find some patterns, especially free ones. So I'm gonna link that down below. Go check that out, because it'll get you right where you need to go. So the pattern that we're gonna do today, I got from Raverly, and I may not be saying that right. So if I'm not, somebody tell me, please. This pattern came from there. So I searched specifically for free crochet bulky yarn, mm, what else did I search for? Free bulk yarn, scarf. And this is what we came up. There was a whole bunch of different things that you could pick from, but there was one for free that you could print out as a PDF, and it looks like this. So this is exactly what we're going to make today. And let's see what we need. Oh, my phone's going crazy. People are texting. I'm trying to make a video. Okay. Or in this, how to read a pattern. Most patterns pretty much follow a standard kind of um, format template. It's not always that way, but for the most part, you can kind of find what you're looking for. So in this particular one, first thing, I wanted to look at difficulty level, and there was a way, or there is a way to search for that specifically on Raverly that lets you put in easy. Uh, so difficulty level was one circle out of five. So I'm going to expect this to be easy, and if we get halfway in this project and it's like this is horrible, then We'll start over, but anyways, this is where we're gonna start. Okay, so materials. So it says that we need two skeins. Now remember, a skein is like a, a okay, hold on. <laughs> skein is one of these. All right, so it specifically says that it wants Lion brand, wool ease, thick and quick. Okay, so I went to Myers here. If you have one of those, I highly recommend it. Myers has a great option for some fairly well-priced yarn, but you can also get this on Amazon. Uh, I'll give you guys some links for this too so that you don't have to go search for it, but they'll have descriptions. So this particular pattern is gonna call for two of these. Wool ease, thick and quick. You can get it any color you want. Now, if you are a experienced crocheter, I'm gonna tell you something, but if you're just starting out, and let me just tell you, I don't care when I tell you this, but if you're first starting out, just go grab yarn that matches. But if you're an experienced, advanced crocheter and you're like girl i need a little bit more then you might want to look at the lot size lot number that is on here because sometimes even though it's the same color that's written on the label if you get it in different lots they may not be exactly the same and if you care about that then you need to search for the back of your yarn is going to have the lot number so on this particular one it's right there so you want to find yarn that all came from that same lot number if you're really caring about that but as a beginner don't worry about it just grab some yarn that you love all right here we go there are a few other things that you're going to need for this project you're always like every project's going to need this little sucker and remember these come in different ways but these are cheap don't spend a whole lot of money on them they can be the metal kind or the plastic kind this little doodad that is all bent out of shape is my favorite one you're also going to need a pair of scissors. I always say that most of us moms have about 48 pairs of these uh, kid-proof scissor safes in our junk drawers. Go grab one of those. And then lastly, what you're going to need is a 10 millimeter, or if you're looking for the letter, it's an N like Nancy. That's what this little thing is. You can get them in plastic or metal. Um, they also sometimes come with handles. I'm not one that's a big uh, fan of the handles because sometimes I'd like my loops to be able to slide down, but you figure out what your preference is on best with that. But this is what the hook is that I'm gonna use for this project. Um, one of the things about these plastic ones, they do write what it is on the side, but girl, 
I'm like ugly face trying to figure out what it is. So one quick tip, you may once you figure out what your needle is, go grab a Sharpie and write with the black Sharpie on the end of it what your needle size is and then that way you're not like this. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna grab everything and we're gonna walk through the first few stitches. On your pattern, you're gonna have abbreviations. Uh, and on this one, it looks like this. And so what you're, instead of the author of this pattern having to write out like chain stitch or double chain stitch over and over again, again, they just kind of have some shortcuts or shorthands or I remember shorthands. I remember my mom had this book downstairs. She still has it where she learned how to do shorthand. And I'll, I mean, I can remember being like eight and thinking I'm gonna learn how to do shorthand. Kind of glad I didn't do that. Okay, anyways, back to this. All right, so these is this is kind of like our uh, key words that we're going to kind of keep right in front of us. These are pretty standard across most pander patterns, so you get to the point where you're like, okay, I got it. I don't need to look over the abbreviations, but always start there just to make sure that the author didn't have something that was a little funky. I do want to pause here for just a second and talk about this. There is a difference between what they call US Canada or American, sometimes they call it that, and British. And so you yeah, want to double check to make sure most uh, patterns that you're going to get are usually, unless they're like vintage, uh, are, are your US Canadian American type one. Any pattern that you get from me, just plan on that's what it is. But if you have one that specifically says that it's British, just know your stitches are different. I got a blog post about that too. Okay. Our first set of instructions on this says to chain 122. Turn some music on, girls. Let's go. Now, if you're like me and you've got like a gazillion distractions, dogs barking, kids coming in, ask you questions, husband's like, where is that item? I do these in increments of 25 when you have these really long ones and then I'll mark it down on my paper. Just, it helps brain. Okay, keep going. Good gracious, that was a lot. Okay, so now we have this really, really long chain and we're gonna then go back to our instructions and see what we need to do for the next row. So it says to us that we are gonna start in the third chain from the hook and we are going to do a half double crochet. Now this is a new stitch for us, so we're gonna kind of slow this down for the first couple ones. So first let's talk about how do we determine what is the third chain from the hook. So remember, the one that is on the hook does not count. So then you're gonna look at the top of your loops. So we've got one, two, and three. So again, one from the hook doesn't count, counting three over, and I'm gonna stick my hook. Actually, I'm not, because we're gonna do a half double crochet. Okay, so here we go. We've been doing single crochets. This is very similar to that. We're just gonna add some extra loops. So we're gonna start out with a yarn over. Remember, yarn goes from the back to the front. We're gonna find that third loop, come through. You're gonna yarn over and pull through one time. That's gonna give us three loops on our on our um, crochet hook. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through all three. That is a half double. This is probably my favorite crochet stitch of all time because it gives you just enough height but a little bit of a variance between a single crochet. So this is exactly what we're gonna do all the way across. So let's do a couple more together and then we'll kind of speed this up a little bit. So I'm gonna yarn over the very next loop. I'm gonna push it through, yarn over, pull through one, again, leaves me with three on my hook, yarn over and pull through. We'll do one more together. Yarn over, through that loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and all the way through. All right, so I'm gonna do that all the way to the very end and then I'll be right back. Okay, so this is what we ended up with. So we have our first row, I won't really call it a row because it's just our chain stitches and then our official first row where we did all of our half double crochets, which is written as HDC on the pattern. So the next step, we're gonna chain two. So I'm at the tail end of that row, I'm gonna do two. We have one more thing that we need to learn how to do here. So I'm gonna chain two, and I'm gonna turn this, just like we've done in our previous patterns, turn. And this one, what we're going to do is a half double crochet in the back 
loop. I know that sounds like a whole lot, I promise. It's, it's, it's not. So what we're going to do is if you look and you have your V here, usually we would have gone through both parts of that V, but instead we're only gonna go through one of these loops and it's gonna be the loop that's the furthest away from you. So half double crochet, I'm gonna yarn over and then I'm gonna find my V and find the loop that's the furthest away from me. So that's what it looks like yarn over and pull through and now I still have three loops just like we did before I'm going to yarn over and pull all the way through so again instead of going through the entire hole like we would have we're only going to pick up that back loop it's the loop that is the furthest away from you so I'm going to let me find my tail here this is the only problem with working with big projects it's just long and okay rampage all right so we're going to yarn over Find that back loop, yarn over, pull through, three loops, yarn over, pull all the way through. Let's do this one more time. So yarn over, find the back loop, ooh, yarn over, find that back loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. So I'm gonna do this until we get to the very end and then we'll talk. Okay, so a couple of things. When you get to the end of this row, this is a good opportunity to just stop and pause even lay your design down and make sure that you got that last stitch because the last thing you want, I mean, you want, you want your, like your rectangle, right? And you don't want it to, what we've talked about before, look like a pyramid. So at the end of your row, just kind of lay it down on a piece of, you know, on your table here. And I'm sorry for using this dark yarn. That was not a good idea with this. Um, just make sure that this really has a nice line to it so that you can see that you've got to the very last stitch. So right here, what I like to do is I go and have my little pencil box. <laughs> I go and find, again, cheap pencils that the kids have left over from their school supplies. And this particular pattern is gonna call, so now we've done row one and row two, but we have to do it till it gets to row eight. And I don't know about you, but again, my brain cannot keep up with that. There are times where I'm gonna stop and start this crochet pattern. I may not be in this room the entire time that I'm doing this. It may be a stop and start. So I just use this blank part of the paper to kind of write where I'm at. So we had two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So we've already done row two, because that's the one that we just did. So again, I, I know this is pretty like simple, but this just is, is the way that I kind of work my way through doing the rows. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this out. And then once I get down here to row eight, I'm gonna come back to you, check in, see how everybody is doing. And then we'll go talk about finishing touches. Okay, thank you. So at some point in your project, you're going to have to connect that second skein of yarn. And so you get to the point that you're like, okay, what do I do here? So the first option is, is that you can put these two things together and tie them as a knot, tie them really, really tight, and then just cut off the scissor part. The other option that you can do that I'm going to show, oh, my yarn just disappeared, is that I'm going to connect this and then weave in the ends. So what I have here is, again, tail end, I have probably about six to eight inches left. Man, that yarn just hit the floor again. Six to eight inches left over on the tail here. I'm going to take this and I'm going to just loop it around, right? So that I have two ends. Again, nothing fancy. doesn't have to be very long. I guess probably about another six, six to eight inches. And then I'm going to have it there and I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to hold it like this. So I've created a bit of a loop tail. Yarn is coming down. So on this, at any point, it doesn't really matter where you do this, but just how I'm going to do it is I'm going to come through the back of my yarn over and come through the back just like I was creating a stitch but instead of yarning over with that short end that we had I'm going to let that drop down behind and I'm going to yarn over with that loop that I created and I'm going to come through one and then I'm going to use the new yarn to yarn over and pull all the way through okay so what's that's done now is I now have like three pieces of yarn that is hanging out over here on this side. So this is the main thread that is funny th fun funneling through and then we have our two ends here. So what we're going to do is actually weave this into our stitches. So I'm going to hold it. Let me move this out of the way. I'm going to hold these two just right along the edge of the back. So I'm going to yarn over, go through that back loop, and in between me yarning over and pulling through, I have sandwiched these two threads. 
That's what's holding it in place. I'm gonna yarn over and pull all the way through. So let's do that again. Yarn over with your main yarn. Come through that back loop, sandwich your two ends as you yarn over. So all that is like squished together in that same loop. And then yarn over. Let's do this one more time. Yarn over, come through the back loop. Sometimes you have to go find it. Sandwich those in as you yarn them over and come across. I do this for a couple of stitches so that I've got, you can, you can actually do it all the way through if you want. But I am going to show you something because sometimes if these tails are too long, you don't have to go like a crazy amount. So I'm going to give me one more, just sandwiching that in there. One more, one more. All right. And then I'm just going to pull that loop out there for a second. So what got left is, is I have these like little tails that are hanging out. And I'm just going to get my scissors. And now be really careful because you're only going to want to cut your tails. I'm going to cut this tail right here. And then if you gently pull your project, what's going to end up happening is, is those tails will get kind of tucked down into the stitches that you've made and you won't even tell that you switched over in your colors. So let's do a couple more and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right. So again, what you've got here is then is your product. And when you get started in here, you won't be able to tell that you have done your additional colors. So that's another option. All right, I'm gonna keep going. Gotta get to eight rows. I'll see you there. We've made it to the end. So first things, you all know how I feel about this. I just grab a little Ziploc bag and this is where all my garbage goes in. I've used the same Ziploc bag for like, I don't know, like a year. All I do is I fill it all the way up and when I get to the end, then, you know, I go find a gar for real garbage can. But this is just a nice way to be able to have it in my uh, crochet bag and you know, that's my little tip there. So we have made it to the very end. This is a very, very, very long project, but we are gonna move to the very next step. Um, first thing, what I'm going to do is pull my needle out to create my loop. I'm gonna go grab a pair of my kid, trusty kid scissors, and cut this right here. Gently pull from the yarn that's going, and then now I have my giant scarf. Now you could definitely stop here, or you can continue on with the pattern and make the fringy stuff. So that's our next step. So when you look over the pattern, the pattern tells you to cut 32 strands of 10 inch uh, length. Now you could go get a ruler or you don't have to be exact. So you figure this piece of paper is what, eight and a half by 11. So my strands are actually gonna be 11. I'm just gonna use this piece of paper to cut and I will do that now. All right. have a tip to do this faster I'm sure there is a much faster way than what I am doing here please leave it below in the comments would love to hear from you all right I'm gonna get to 32 strands and then I'll be back so before we get started with actually putting our fringe on here you you have a decision point you can either leave the ends of your projects so you're gonna have one on each side um, and then just consider this one of your fringe or if you're like uh, no, I, I don't, I don't want to do that. So what you're going to do is use your yarn needle, uh, thread that through, and then you're just going to weave the ends just back through your project. You'll do that for both sides and then we'll get started with your fringe. Okay, so we cut 32 strands. And so what that's going to end up giving, we're going to put two strands together per fringe. This is going to make sense here in just a second. So that means that we're going to have eight on each side. So at the end here, what you want to do is kind of pick up the end first and plan out where do you want those eight holes to go. And so what I'm going to do is look at the end of each row. So we've got one right here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm not going to come down to the to the very end because I want I don't want to create this kind of big hole there. I'm going to come up just a little hair 
Um, so for instance, let's go right here to the end here. So instead of coming down around these last few stitches, I'm going to come up just a little bit. I'm going to grab two and you're going to grab your same crochet hook that you had before. And all you're going to do, and again, you can either do this facing your way or the other way you find what's comfortable for you. You're going to stick your hook through that hole and you're going to grab the middle. So I'm just folding that in half, the middle of both of these, and pull this through so that you have a loop. Now don't stop there, take your hook out. So now you have this circle, and you're gonna take all of the ends through that circle, and then pull down gently. And so don't worry about your fringe being uneven, we'll fix that here at the end. So that's our first one. So again, we're gonna find our next little one that we want it to go in. I think we're gonna go right there. I'm gonna grab two. Actually, you know what, we might go over here. I'm gonna kind of go back and forth. Let's go here to the end. Again, I'm gonna make a loop, grab it with my hook and pull it through that circle so that I have my loop on the other side. Pull my ends through, gently pull, 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 pull. Again, don't worry about the ends, we'll fix those. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this all the way through and I'll be right back. Okay, so we have this entire side done. Now, if you're a girl that you're like, I want a little bit more fringe, don't be afraid of this. Add whatever you want to this. It really, it really does not matter at all. I will say that if you're one that likes more fringe, then instead of buying two skeins, you were gonna wanna get three because this is gonna like use every ounce of yarn that you have. You're not gonna have a whole lot of extra to play around with. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of comb this forward. It doesn't need to be anything too terribly fancy. And all I'm gonna do is cut the ones that are just like really, really, really long. So I'm just gonna kind of come across the edge here and I am no hairdresser, so this is why I do not cut my own kids' bangs, let's just say that, or or, or my own bangs on that end. So I'm gonna just kinda pull this across. That one's really long, let's get that one. All right, so now, let's get these last few down here at the end. We're gonna flip this over and do the exact same process on the other side. We've made it to the finished product. <laughs> so this one is like super long, so you can do that whole like, it's really, really, it's not cold in wool, but wherever you are, if it's super cold, you have the option to really, really make this fancy if you want to. I'm just saying. There you go, ladies. All right, if you stuck with me this long, first off, you are amazing. You definitely need to be part of our newsletter. So that way you don't have to know, like keep track of a YouTube channel or a blog or whatever. It's just gonna automatically come to your inbox and you click it. There it is. So I'm gonna put a quick link down below where you can sign up for our newsletter. It's free, it comes to you. It's like once a week, once every other week, just when we have information that I think is valuable for you. Uh, I think that our next project is, is maybe make a hat that goes with us. So that might be next weekend's project. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Thanks for sticking with me. Have an awesome weekend. Bye.